diversity is a critical aspect of sourcing our projects and of sourcing for any journalist. Among the assigned readings, um, a list of questions that you should be able to answer before pitching a story, which is relevant for this project and just for um, really any content you're going to produce. And one of the questions I want to draw your attention to for this lesson is, why will the reader or viewer care? So let's think about this discussion in that context. Um, you'll find many, many resources out there for talking about diversity, the diversity toolbox being one of them. And a main point of that is that diversity is accuracy. That this article that um, is also in the reading is that, you know, you really have to be out in the community. You've got to be among the people that you're covering to really get an accurate view of who is, who makes up that community, who makes up the body of readers and your audience. Let's take a look at a recent report from the Pew Research Center. Um, it's a bit disturbing. Newsroom employees are less diverse than U.S. workers overall. And it found that if you look at U.S. newsrooms across the disciplines, um, across the platform, so um, TV, broadcast, digital, um, digital online, newspapers, that newsrooms are more white and more male than U.S. workers in general. And younger newsroom employees do bring um, some gender equity to the newsroom, but still um, predominantly white, so not um, as diverse as the rest of the U.S. workforce. Um, and we see that over and over again in reports, even though there is quite a push in newsrooms to have them um, representative of the community. So diversity really does equal accuracy. If you think about um, how you're reporting, being able to talk to people from various perspectives, people with multiple perspectives on a story or a topic, is really what you need to have an accurate representation. So let's take a look at something that KUT has been doing. So KUT is the NPR station in Austin. And a year ago, um, in 2018, they took a look at um, the sources that KUT was using, and they just took a snapshot from a few months, uh, January to March of 2018, and they looked at sources then, and then they came back and started looking at those numbers monthly, beginning in September of 18 and going into uh, 2019. And what they found when they first did the snapshot of those three months is that their sources, just with respect to gender, were predominantly male, more than 70% predominantly male um, compared to female. Now, when they uh, revisited that in the latter part of the year, because they had brought awareness to that, they actually found their numbers were much closer to sort of um, what we might think of as content or community parity. So the numbers were much closer. Um, but let's take a look at, the, at the, the reason they did this, right? Is that one of the things that when KUT reported on this, which they've done extensively um, when they reporting and it's all on their website, you can check it out, is they shared their methodology for this and why they were doing this. Um, one of the things they also did was talk to their staff regularly about why they set this goal for increasing diversity in 2019. Developing new and more diverse sources is a process we are dedicating significant effort to this year. And in the methodology um, of how they did this um, source audit of all of their content was that in September they had reporters starting to ask after the interviews, ask people um, how they identify themselves more specifically than might um, be obvious from just their occupation or um, an element that they used on air. Most sources provided the information. Some didn't, and so, you know, that's fine. They noted that. But having that more complete picture of who they're actually talking to. So if you look at um, their numbers overall, we talked about the gender issue. One of the things that's interesting, go back to that, um, thought we had a few minutes ago about newsrooms not being terribly diverse. Um, one of the things the KUT study did was look at male journalists versus female journalists and who they were talking to. And they found that male, sor male journalists talk to more male sources. Now the interesting thing is female journalists talk to um, a percentage, larger percentage of female journalists than the male uh, I mean, I have female sources than the male journalists did, but they still 
didn't reach that sort of source parity, right? They still spoke with more male sources. Those numbers um, were much more equalized when they did the revisit later in the year. Um, let's look at race and ethnicity. Um, this is an area where we have census data, and so we usually compare this based on what the census categories would be. But as with gender, we found that KUT primarily speaking with white sources. Right, so very high numbers with respect to non-Hispanic white. And then we look at the other numbers here. So Latino, Latina, Black, African American, um, Asian, Native American, two or more races. So still such a low number. And look at Austin's demographics, right? So we have these demographics for who KUT was talking to. Yet when you look at Austin's demographics, um, the city, 48% white or um, non-Hispanic compared to who KUT was talking to, which was in way almost 80% um, at the first part of the year, and although better, still above 60%. So this is, not, um, this is not uncommon. I've seen these audit reports done by other media outlets, and there are many reasons for this, but still bringing awareness can help improve coverage. One of the things that happens in Austin, as you might guess, is a lot of political coverage. And so you'll see that the early reports, and then they were, it was a little more specific with the second report, but 63% um, percent of the expert sources that were shown, ex people who were considered experts for a story, 63% were in government. Um, and that's a huge number. I realize that Austin is a seat of state government, but as they were talking to experts, they were primarily going to government. And when you think about who is in government, that leads you back to the gender and race or ethnicity um, issue. So I encourage you to spend some more time um, with that, really looking at it. Um, as I said, this is not uncommon um, to do these kinds of source audits and to hope to see some better awareness for the news staff. This is from uh, WHYY in Philadelphia, another NPR station, done several years ago. Um, so let's take a look at this. The staff of that station um, is more predominantly female, right? So 58% women, 42% men, but 80% white. So 80% white, 7% black. The source data, again, 80% white. So really matching percentages for represent the representation of the staff. Um, so think about that. Think about how the people who work at WHYY and the people that are on air that are used as sources that are telling the story of the community of WHYY, predominantly white. Let's look at who makes up Philadelphia. 35% white, 41% black, 14% Hispanic, 7% Asian, 80%, 7%. 6%, 3% over here. So it is a, a concern as we think about who we're talking to and making sure that we are making a concerted effort to get into our community and to develop sources across our both, both ethnic and racial spectrum, gender spectrum, occupation. There are many resources out there, as I said. So one of them on tracks is the diversity style guide. So sometimes um, when we, re when we um, reach out to people, we just aren't sure um, even what to say. That's one of the things that can make us a little nervous. So the diversity guide is really good at explaining some specific definitions, talking about words um, that are better to use than other words. So I encourage you to check that out. And you can do a whole, there's a whole alphabetical listing. I just picked gender because there's a lot into that, but there's, there's um, the entire alphabet to choose from here. And one of the questions is, um, how do you figure that out, right? So ask the source. If it's relevant to the story, and it isn't always, um, but we do want to identify people fully, right? So ask somebody how they want to be identified. Ask about a pronoun. Ask about race or ethnicity. And almost always we ask about occupation and age. Um, so sources are more credible for our audience when we know who they are, when we can see that they are from our community or from um, the people who are affected by our story. Sometimes we're uncomfortable with asking. You know, I certainly understand that, is we can be uncomfortable, but information is power. So checking the diversity style guide, looking, um, help, help bolster your confidence um, that you know words that are appropriate, and ask somebody what um, word they would choose when identifying themselves. Ask them why 
um, they're talking to you about a specific topic. Oftentimes people will explain in more detail why this is important to their community. AP Stylebook also has, um, as always, a number of pertinent areas. So you can look at gender, you can look at race or ethnicity. Um, aside from just how to do numbers and addresses, um, the AP Stylebook has gotten very good over the last few years of being specific and helping us with things like immigration coverage, like what are some of the appropriate ways um, to use words so that we aren't alienating our audience. So this is what I want you to do now, is I want you to think about the voices you need for your final project. What voices are in danger of not being heard in your project? Who might you leave out? That will be um, part of your diversity assignment.